Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today's video is gonna be about the training and all the stuff that I got in, I got once I was able to go into Disney, uh, all the way up until my first actual day of being on stand at Disney and like guarding as a lifeguard. So there are three things that you do first. You have traditions, you have Ellis lifeguard training, and then you have on the job training at your, at for me, Typhoon Lagoon. So let's get into it, let's do number one traditions first i'm gonna say what is traditions what i learned and did i enjoy it so um what is tradition tradition is just another way for them to say orientation um it was pretty much just an on the job oh, pretty much a first day orientation a lot of powerpoints a lot of presentations um and just a lot of like kind of trying to get everyone in the company to have the same mentality of like what we're doing here. Um, what did I learn? Uh, we learned pretty much the, what like the four key, the five, my bad, five key principles are working at Disney. Um, what are the benefits of working at Disney? Um, how to like clock in and clock out. That was pretty important. Like some of the rules on what you should do and shouldn't do like that stuff. Um, we also learned about like Walt Disney's story, like how he made Disneyland and now Disney World. Um, so that was pretty much it. it was like the history of the company, the uh, five characteristics, the five keys that they have that they try to live by. That was it was a lot of that type of stuff, if that makes sense. Um, it was a pretty good day. Uh, it was again eight to like five. Um, nothing really that long but it felt long so some tips i would say is uh bring water bring an energy drink if you are someone that does that or coffee uh, they do have a lunch cafeteria um, but you can pack your own lunch uh what else they do have it at, like tables so bring something to write with and so you can take notes or like what i did is i just doodled um when we were doing the presentations i just drew stuff to keep me awake but at the end of the end of orientation it was nice uh that's also when you get your blue id so it is the id that shows like you're a staff member and uh yeah so next would have been ellis training what did i do at ellis so ellis is the lifeguard certification class that disney uses it is a modified version of what the public uses because they have specific rules at disney so it's not like the ellis big training it's the two different companies but there's one that's just for disney so ellis is a three-day course it is from like eight to five so like on lifeguarding it's a long day you're doing everything for those three days um your first two days are like actual training your second day is review and or your third day is review and then test day so day one was a lot of standards and procedures for like lifeguarding so like how to do saves what are the different saves um, what are the signs of someone drowning? How to, what are the times that you have to hit? So it's like 20, it's called your 10, 20 is what they call it. It's like 10 seconds to notice something, 20 seconds to give aid. Because by then they're already in the drowning process. Um, other things that we learned on day one were also like CPR. So we went into CPR a lot because it's a big part of being a lifeguard is knowing how to do CPR. So. They had CPR on three different uh, like people. So it was CPR on an infant, CPR on a child, and CPR on an adult. Kind of simple in all the other ways, but they were like really hammered in on that because it's pretty important. Um, day two of Ellis training was all first aid. And I'm saying all first aid, like, give me a second. I'll show you, I have my notes right here. These are the notes that I took on day two of first aid. It was all of this was taken. Just three or four pages of notes of first aid. Anywhere from seizures to uh, heart attacks to bug bites to poison ivy to anything that you can think of. They made sure it was in there because you could run into anything, honestly. And Florida, like we were told how to deal with someone got bit by an animal. It's like, oh, that's kind of weird, but okay. But yeah, you have to think about it. You're in Florida, you're in like a swamp. Not really, but yeah. Um, 
so yeah, that was all first aid. And then after that, we did situation uh, training. So like, it was more of a, you walk out on the pool and you see something and you reacted. Uh, that was like a big thing because the next day, come test day, that's one of our tests. So it was, you have a patient, they're drowning. You have a guest and now they're having a heart attack. You have a guest and they lost, their kid is choking. You have a guest and they can't breathe but they have a pulse. So you have to like react to that stuff. So that was day two. Now day three is test day. The test is three tests. You have a multiple choice test. You have a first a CPR test. And then you have a team reaction test. Kind of like I was saying, the whole scenario reaction. That's what it was. So let's go first. Um, which one did I worry about the most? For me, I worried about the CP, the uh, not CPR, the multiple choice. That's just because who I am, I hate tests. I hate like written tests. So that was my fear. But after it, I was like, oh, this is not bad. Cause I only got like one wrong. You have to get an 80% or higher. It's 50 questions. So I was like, oh, chilling. So there was the tests. Then you had, um, after te the multiple choice test, you had the CPR test. So CPR was just how you do the thing. You would go in there, it was one-on-one -on -one, or one-on-two, -on -two, but kind of one-on-one -on -one with a trainer and you. They would give you either a baby and a child or an adult mannequin. And they say, you found this person and go. So you go through the whole steps of CPR. So checking for if they're conscious and all the way up to uh, the EMTs or paramedics coming to take over. So you did everything for all three of those. Cause they need to make sure you can do all three. Um, after that, it was time for the scanning or the team scenario test. Um, now this one kind of made me worry just a little bit, but not as bad um, because it wasn't that terrible, but I was worried they were gonna throw something out at you that I, we didn't see or that it's like one minute talked about, but it was very, they prepared you very well for these tests. And that's one thing I would say about Ellis is they did a lot of hands-on training, a lot of in the water, making sure you can do stuff. Um, so that was nice. So we went in there and we just, get in the pool, take control of the pool, and then they have like three or four different scenarios and one leading up to needing a backboard somehow. So that wasn't bad. That was, sadly though, not all the training you're getting on Lifeguard and not all the training for Disney either because next thing we had to do was on the job training and Typhoon, for at least what they called it at Typhoon was uh, Forecast Typhoon. Um, it is pretty much just a first day, like more paperwork, more um, office training, I guess. Not office training, but like stuff that you would do for any job and uh, like history of the park, uh, the like mentality of the park, like what our goals are and vision for the park and water work and the water parks. So. That's all that was the first day. Also for lifeguards, we learned on that first day how to do bleed control because only lifeguards at the water parks, I think, no, no. I think it's just, Ellis doesn't do bleed control, the only life, like the lifeguard trainers do. So it's just like a tourniquet, bandages, uh, how to like pack a wound if something happens. Just your regular like first, your regular bleeding training. So we did that. And then we also got a tour of the park on uh, Forecast Typhoon. Now this is gonna be like the first out of three tours that you get. Um, but this one is more of a general overview for everyone because at Forecast, you are not just with lifeguards, it's lifeguards and custodial and food and bev and just anyone that is coming in that day is gonna do that course. So it was a nice day. Um, a lot of it was inside again. You can bring your own lunch. They have a cast area if they wanted to buy lunch, but that's up to you. <sighs> Apologize. So for that, that, that's forecast. And I include that as on job training because it was at Typhoon and you were actually at the park. So now let's go to the actual lifeguard on the job trainings, which consists of 
three days and then a test day for deep water lifeguards like myself. So day one is gonna be all about the OGs. So it's a lot of reading and a lot of like rules and like procedures and EAP, so emergency action plan for each individual stand. So you have to read through all of that. And then you also get a second tour, that's where your second tour comes in, and you tour the shallow stands. So they divide shallow and deep stands um, just by how deep the water is. So you go to all the shallow stands throughout the park, you look at them, you get told information like where the backboard is, where the nearest trauma bag is, what your zone of coverage is, and like what your EPA is if something happens. And then now we have day two. Day two for on the job training is pretty much the same, or not, it's pretty much just going back to those areas, but now you're actually like taking control, taking control, because you're not technically a full lifeguard yet, so you're taking control of the water and you're just displaying that you know how to lifeguard, displaying your scanning procedures, displaying like it's getting on and off, showing that you can keep your 1020 and like interact with guests if needed, if anything was to come up. So that's all day two really was. You just went through all the shallow stands and just made sure everyone knew what they were. Um, also, if you need to, you could also read the OGs that you haven't read from the day before. Uh, as my such, I did because I, you're always slow at reading. Not slow, it's just tedious. So uh, it took me two days to read all those. Um, and then day three is where it separates from shallow water guards to deep water. So on day three for deep water is our like deep stance. On day three for shallow water, if I'm not mistaken, day three is their test day. So we had to do um, go to the stands. This is also like your third tour kind of because you go to the deep water stands and you like scan in and map. you get toward them and they tell you what everything is and then you scan in on those and you display your lifeguarding skills of covering the water. After that, you go back and you read your deep water OGs. So there are six, seven, eight deep water stands. So there's eight OGs you have to read for that. And at this point, a lot of them you will start to notice are kind of repetitive, especially the six of the wave wall because they're all the same generally uh, for the EPA, like the emergency plan of action because they're all like the same area, if that makes sense. So it's all one pool. So it's all the same EPA, <laughs> e EAP, my bad, not EPA, EAP. So after you do that, you are done for that day. And then you go to test day, which is known as a Kappa. So it is a knowledge assessment. And all you do is, um, for me at least, I reviewed the first uh, few hours of it. And then my trader let us go out and I just asked any questions I had, made sure everything I was saying was correct. And then we went back backstage. I took a multiple choice test. Now this one is not something we're stressed about either, but it is a lot a bit longer because it has Ellis training questions. It has on the job questions that other regular lifeguard questions that add like hospitality questions and like park questions. So it was just a lot. So it's not like hard. It's just, it's a longer test just so you are aware. And then after your multiple choice, you go do your um, like in-person test, I guess would be the best way to say it. So you just make sure that like, you can scan on and out of all the positions, you know, everything that pretty much everything that like you asked in the morning, you're pretty much saying again in the afternoon. And after that, you're finally certified as a lifeguard. But however, you're not done with training. So for Disney uh, and Ellis, you have to do four hours of training each month. So it's divided up by two days or two hours each. And you just come in for us, we come in at 7.15 and then we just do an hour or just do two hours of lifeguard training and then turn everything back in. But that is something that they do that most places don't do is the fact that it's like every month you have to have those two hours or else you can't lifeguard. So yeah. Um, I hope that is everything that people are looking for. Uh, I know when I looked up stuff, there wasn't really anything to see recent because Disney's just hiring again. So I'm trying to give everyone that's looking now 
a glimpse at what their training is. So yeah, I wanted to make a video because when I know I was looking up, um, there wasn't much coming out because Disney just started to hire again because pandemic is over. So they're in the rush for hiring. So I hope this helps anyone that is looking. Um, if you want to become a lifeguard, I say do it. It's not the most difficult job in the world. You just got to pay attention, know how to swim, and honestly just be a open, bubbly kind of person because you do talk to a lot of guests. A lot more than you think, but you do talk to them. So I would say do it. I enjoy it. I enjoy being outside all the time. I don't know if you can tell from like this video to like a video two months ago, I'm a lot more tan than I am now. So that's awesome. But yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed. I will see you guys in the next one. And till then, everyone, please be safe. If you like this, please like and subscribe this video. That would mean everything to me. Bye, guys.